Venus flytraps are one of the most interesting plants in the world because they literally eat animals. But they can get extremely expensive. That's why today we are going to look at the best $1 flytrap all the way up to a $100 flytrap just to figure out if you actually need to go into debt to own one. And to start off, we've got this colorful, beautiful, huge clump of boring and basic flytraps. This is the cheapest flytrap you could ever get at just $1 because this guy isn't special in any way, which is why it's called a typical. And although he does look pretty good right now, this isn't normal and this is where a problem sort of appears. It is winter right now and all our plants are actually asleep. So instead of only showing you what they look like right now, I made sure to take pictures and videos of them one year ago just so that you guys can see how good each plant actually is at catching their food. And when it comes to the cheapest flytrap we own, he's pretty much as good as any other flytrap as long as it's actually healthy and not on the way out like they usually are. And the best part about them sleeping is that we can pull them out of the ground which won't disturb them at all. And now we can also compare and see who has the best looking roots. You don't see that every day do you? Now a $1 flytrap might seem like a good deal but a plant this cheap will probably be close to dying when you first get it. The random weeds and grass that comes with it usually spreads and infects all the other plants around it. And don't forget about all the pests that they usually have too. It might be cheap, but it could wipe out your entire collection. Don't ask me how I know. And now that we know what features the cheapest or maybe the worst flytrap actually comes with, we can compare it to all the other plants we have in the greenhouse including the rarest and most expensive ones in our garden so we can figure out which one is best. Now a $10 flytrap is where things start to get interesting. These are some of the most basic and common flytraps you can find. And even though most of them are going to have good colors and be healthier than the $1 flytraps, sometimes you can get some really cool looking ones. The only problem is that the ones that look really cool for $10 don't always work properly. And you'll find out why when we get to the more expensive plants. Even the ones that look like they should work sometimes don't. But thankfully for us, these plants don't need to eat to survive. But before we take a look at a $10 plant that actually can eat, some of the best parts of these plants is the stuff you don't even realize is missing. Remember all the grass and weeds from before? Well, a $10 plant shouldn't have any of that. Well, maybe a bit of moss, but if it's full of weeds and grass, whoever is selling that plant for $10 probably doesn't give as much attention to the plants as they might need. And just because it's $10 doesn't mean that it's perfect. Even though it might look healthy and not have any weeds, that doesn't mean it's going to be very big or come without any pests. The amount of times I have forgotten to separate new plants from the collection to make sure that they don't have any pests is embarrassing. Every time I forget to do this and then see some aphids, I promise myself not to do it again, but I always do. Anyways, their roots will usually be pretty small and short because a $10 flytrap isn't going to be too big. Wow, there's barely any roots in here. That's why the soil keeps falling apart. Let's put it back before it just disintegrates. And just like the $1 flytrap, they should be pretty good at eating anything that gets addicted to that nectar. And although the $10 flytraps are some of my favorite, this is where things start to get premium. For $50, you usually get a flytrap that is rarer than what you can find at a shop or most places online. And rare plants usually mean amazing colors, interesting shapes, and sometimes really big plants. 
but once again, just because they look cool and are a bit more expensive, doesn't mean they can all catch bugs. These weird and different shaped traps usually mean that they can't close, even if they actually try. Some of them don't have working trigger hairs, some of them are so chunky that they can't move their little traps, and others might not even have teeth to hold their food in. But this is all part of what makes them so rare and unique. And most of the time, this is why experienced growers would still buy one of these plants even if they know they don't close properly. Yet, this is also what confuses beginners the most. They might end up buying a slightly more expensive plant that looks pretty cool, but it ends up not working. And then they start to panic because why is a plant that is meant to close its mouth not working? However, before we see a $50 plant that actually can use its mouth, the best part of these guys is that almost all of them will be very healthy. You don't need to worry about weeds, grass, or even pests, but you'll probably still get moss. I've been growing these plants for 15 years now, and I still don't know if I like this moss or not. <sighs> Anyway, it's usually pretty easy to remove the moss if you don't like it. A $50 flytrap's roots should be pretty big and chunky, and if you ever do this, you can just pull out the chunks of moss if you don't like them. And if you didn't know, this big ball here is actually where the plants store all the energy that they get from their food, which means that some of the energy from this bug will go straight into making this plant's rhizome bigger. Yet, this plant is nothing compared to the $100 flytraps because this is where things become tricky. You see, even though these plants have some of the most beautiful colors, shapes, and extremely rare mutations, the things that make them so rare also makes them very difficult to grow. Not only do variegated traps look cool, but they also need more light than others because their traps are missing that green pigment which helps them grow. And aside from that, these plants are also so rare because they usually need the perfect amounts of sunlight, the cleanest water, and most of the time, the exact amount of fertilizer, seeing as most of them can't eat or don't eat enough to keep them healthy. But if you can figure out how to give them what they need, you will grow some of the most beautiful and amazing Venus flytraps in the world. But before anyone is able to see how good they are at catching their food, just be ready to start off with tiny baby plants first, because even though they are expensive, they will be small. I don't mind though, because it is fun to grow them from little babies, and we can stop that moss from growing before it really takes off. Yet, parts of them being small means that you will also have small roots. It's not a big problem as long as you are experienced enough to care for an expensive and difficult to care for plant. But is an expensive and beautiful plant actually able to catch food? Or are they just as useless at that as they are at growing? Now, this might be a $100 flytrap, but there are a few that are actually worth more than this. They are even more difficult to grow, have rarer features, and might even be bigger than the $100 plants, or in some cases, even smaller. And these are just the flytraps. And even though I love all of my plants, and they have been a huge part of my life, if we compare the plants from today, the best ones are probably the $10 plants for beginners. After that, a $50 plant might be good when you get more used to growing them, and only after that should you look at the $1 or $100 plants, because both of them need more care than you might think. But let me know what you guys think. If you want to see why the world's rarest fly trap can't catch green flies, click on the video on screen, and please subscribe to the channel. I'll see you there.